I'm Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up's products for Elizabeth Craft Designs. And today, I'll be teaching how to make this. A staggered accordion card with a hanging charm. This is my project for the 2nd July 2016 Designer Challenge. This challenge was set by Kelly Booth, and her theme is called Stretch It Out, and we are to use one of the nine different accordion album dies. So today's technique is going to be an adaptation of 771, which is the fancy label accordion. I'm starting with a pretty heavy weight cardstock and I need to get three pieces and they are five inches wide by six and seven eighths of an inch long. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why, why Karen, why can't I just round up to seven inches? It'd be so much easier. And the answer is, is your tabs will not line up on your staggered fancy accordion if you go the full seven inches. You gotta come back in one eighth of an inch and make your pieces five inches wide by six and seven eighths inches long. And then just go ahead and repeat that with whatever pattern paper that you wanna use for decoration. So now I'm gonna do some die cutting and I wanna go ahead and die cut through my cardstock and my pattern paper at the same time. So I want those lined up and temporarily attached to each other using some removable tape, but I still want to be able to take those apart after die cutting. So here's my fancy accordion. And I want to go ahead and line this up in the upper left corner. So you can see there, I'm going to flip this over. It's going to be easier for me to get that corner lined up right seated inside the die. Now, I'm not going to worry so much that I haven't completely covered my tab over here. That would have required you to cut your paper to five and an eighth inch, and I'm not a complete ogre. So it's fine to have your tab just a little bit skinnier. It will still be enough to attach. So just make sure that the upper left corner is tucked right there into the die. And then as far as sending this through your die cutting machine, you will definitely want to stop your cutting pad short. So we don't want the cutting pad to go all the way to the bottom edge because what we want to do is cut the fancy accordion into the top part of this piece and leave the bottom still attached. Not a bad idea to actually roll it through twice so that you make sure that you get through the paper and the cardstock. Now I'm going to do that exact same thing with another piece of pattern paper and cardstock stacked up together, die lined up in the upper left corner. And since the cutting pad is being stopped short, rather than try and roll it back through, what you need to do is lift the whole piece up, put it right back in position so that you can cut, stop the cutting pad short and run it through again. So if you're running it through twice, you definitely want to do it in the same direction both times. Don't try and get your machine to grab that edge of the cutting pad to roll back through the other way. It just won't work. It'll just push it. It'll be really difficult. So just pick the whole platform up, pull it back on the other side, and run it back through again. Now for my third and final set of pages, I'm still going to do everything the same as far as attaching the pieces together temporarily. I'm still going to line up my die in a corner, but I'm not going to line it up in the upper left corner. I'm going to line it up in the upper right corner because this piece is going to be flipped around so that the accordion is at the bottom of the piece. So definitely when you're picking your pattern paper, you want to make sure that you're picking one that has no direction. In other words, like I've got just all over flowers here, something that you don't have to worry too much about which way is up because otherwise you got to do a lot of thinking during the die cutting process to make sure you're at the bottom for this one and the top for the others. So just pick an all over pattern, some stripes or some flowers or something that polka dots, something that works in any direction and you'll be fine. I'm choosing the second largest decorator label die that comes in the set, and that's what I'm gonna to use to cut a hole through both layers here on this page that's gonna end up being my center page in the album. So this is gonna give me that hole through the album that's gonna be a perfect place to hang a charm. My white cardstock is gonna be what puts the mechanism of the album together, and the pattern paper is just for decoration. So I can go ahead and trim out the interior label parts of those pages and the side tabs. So I'm just using my scissors to cut out the labels and my trimmer to cut off the side tab, and I'll do that on all three pages. I'm going to use a scoring board to extend the score line for the side tabs, but technically for page three there's no reason to do that because that side tab is going to get cut off on page three. There is no page four. I can take off the little small tabs next to the label as well. So just on that one page, page three, I don't need any side tabs. 
The other two pages, of course, I do need the side tabs because they're what's going to connect the pages to each other. So I've extended that score line so that it's easy to fold now all the way down the page on the side tab. Before I attach these pages to each other, I'm going to do a little bit of decorating on each page. The first thing I'm going to do is just add my pattern paper to my center page. So I'm basically looking now at the card when it's open, and I've decided on the center page, I just want to go ahead and cover it with the pattern paper. And a brayer can be really helpful if you're using glue just to set that glue and get that on there permanently. For the first and the third page, I'm going to stencil on my background, and I'm using one of my layering stencils. So this is S008, the baby pajamas. And the way these layering stencils work is you use one color through the top half of the stencil. So in this case, I've got the baby pajamas, and I'm doing that in a pink using a blending tool and just swirling that ink through the stencil. Then what you do is you lift that up. Now you've got some cute baby pajamas. And those could be used just on their own. But when you want to add the hearts, you just slide the stencil straight up. You can see right through the stencil. Once you see the hearts over the top of the little baby pajamas in a position that you like, go ahead and tape that down so it doesn't move. And then switch to a second color. So I'm going to use a dark red now and go through there and swirl some ink through all of those hearts. So what's really cool about this stencil is that it's really three stencils in one. You could use just baby pajamas, just hearts, or you can use them layered together. It makes just such a cute little pattern. The other nice thing about this stencil is it is repeatable. So I can just go move the stencil, start over again, and I can do a huge area that way. So I did repeat that pattern to do the entire page one, the label part of page two, and then all of page three. And another thing I did is added some thin strips of pattern paper just around the outer edges of page one and page three so that that would kind of frame the card on the inside. Now that all my page decoration is done, I can go ahead and attach the pages to each other. And that's what those side tabs are for. Between page one and page two, it will end up being a valley fold. So you can see here, I'm actually just folding that tab into that valley fold. It really helps me make sure that I place those well and that it can still fold easily between the two pages. Then between page two and page three, that tab will become a mountain fold. So once again, I can go ahead and fold that into a mountain shape and then attach page three over the top of that tab and get them sealed together nicely. This is all the interior of the card. But when the card ends up being folded up, you're actually going to see the front of the album here. So that's where I'm going to put one of those pieces of pattern paper that I had done earlier. And I think actually I'm even going to trim down so that I get a little white border around the outside. So I'll just use my trimmer to shave a little bit off of each of the four sides and then just glue it right into place. And then in the interest of having all three pages have a similar weight, I'll go ahead and add the final piece of pattern paper to the back of page three. I did shave off just a little bit of the side that's going to be behind that fold, so it could just kind of stay out of the fold and not want to buckle on me. And then I can just glue that right into place. The Baby Pajamas layering stencil actually matches the shape of one of the charms in the Baby Charms die set. And so I'm going to go ahead and die cut that cute little pair of stitched baby pajamas out of a pink cardstock. And before I take it out of the die, I'm going to sponge in the dark red through the stencil feature on the die so that it will really match the look of the stenciled pajamas. I'm going to nest together the two largest decorator dies from the fancy accordion set to make myself a little frame that will fit right around that opening on the page. And I'll get that glued in in place. And then for hanging my charm in the opening, I'm just going to use a metal jump ring. So I'll just get that through the hole, thread my little charm into place, and then the easiest way to close a jump ring, I think, is just to use two sets of pliers one on either side and then just twist the jump ring back closed again. Another one of the charms included in the baby charm set is this cute little bunny charm. And this one also has a stencil feature. So before removing the paper from the die, I'm going to take a pink marker through the centers of the ears and then a real thin black pen through the eyes, tracing around the nose and the little heart. The same holes that are used to do the stenciling are actually the holes that you can use to pop the paper out of the die. And then one last thing is I'll just take that pink marker again and go in there and add some color to the little heart in the center of his little nose. And then I've got this adorable, cute little bunny.
Now for the bunny, I've decided I'm not gonna hang it using the little hang hole so I can go ahead and cut that off, just round that around so that he's got little matching ears. What I actually thought would be cute on this project would be to make a little chain of bunnies. So I've done three bunnies. They all have the double-sided adhesive on the back. That just makes it really easy to attach the twine right across the arms on the back of the bunny. So I'm just peeling up the liner until I can access the arms and then I'm just going to press the twine right across the bunny and put the liner back into place. Now when I'm ready to add that to the card, I will just peel up the liner and stick them down and it'll trap the, the twine in place. But for now I'm going to leave the liner on the back so that they're not sticky. The baby clear stamp set is going to provide the perfect greetings. This particular set has lots of things that can be combined in different ways. So I'm going to use the congrats on your new and then I'll put baby right underneath that and then I'll stamp in the word girl. I can use one of the decorator dies from the fancy accordion to cut that out perfectly to fit on my project and I'll also use some pink markers to color in the word baby. And then I just added some similar decorations to page three, layered my different labels, I've got my bunnies on page one, and now I've got everything decorated, I'm ready to assemble the album. First thing I need to do is remember those folds I did early on where I've got a valley between the first two pages and a mountain between the second two pages. And I want to twist my first page so the tabs come into the album. I'm going to twist the second page so the tabs go back behind the album and the third page in the opposite direction. So you can see what happens is the tabs now kind of come across and join the two pages together. Now since I did a staggered album, I'm only going to be able to use one of the tabs to connect each page to its neighbor. So between page one and two, it'll be this bottom tab here. I like to go ahead and fold it first to get that kind of mountain showing. And then while it's flat, it's probably easier for me. I'm just going to go in and trim off the upper tab because I don't need it. So I'll add my adhesive to my tab. And now what I want to do is bring the other label over and attach those together. Another reason I like to use glue for these little tabs is because while it's still a little bit wet, I can collapse that album up and just give everything a good press in the closed position, but I can still move it if I needed to, if for instance it was really crooked. But it's nice and straight, so now I've got those two pages attached. So now let's work on the connection between page two and page three. These two pages will connect using that upper tab on page two. So you can kind of see it from this angle. This is the tab that's going to be used and I'm going to bring that across and attach it to page three. It will be a valley fold. So I'm a big fan of training that fold first. And then I just need to find an angle where I can get in there with my glue and add a little glue to that tab. Okay, so now all I need to do is bring my page three across my page two and get that started to set up. And again, if there's a chance to kind of collapse the album up so that you can work on this in the closed position, that's really a good idea, especially for this one, which is a valley. Oh, and by the way, watch your charm. I see I'm bending my charm here. Let me put that back in place. Okay, so see when it's a valley connection, it tends to want to pop back up. So it's really great to do that connection in the closed position like this. You're kind of giving that a little room inside to open nicely. So now I've got my album all assembled together. You can see that I still do have that extra little tab hanging there on page two. So I can just go in with my scissors now and snip that off. You know, I really like this card design, not just for baby, obviously that's what I chose to do on this card, but think about this card just as a technique. You could definitely change out the charm, change out the greetings and the embellishments, and it could be good for any theme. It's very generic in terms of shape. Rather than cut off my excess twine, I decided just to add some little hearts back to back around it just to kind of tie in that heart theme that's on the little bunnies themselves. Now when this opens up, it's going to make a great little display piece. It'll stand nicely on the table. Little charm's going to hang there. And then if you want to mail it to somebody, it is going to fit nicely in an A7 envelope. So that's an envelope designed for a 5x7 card, which our card is darn near 5x7. I will say it's a little bulky with the embellishments I put on it with the ribbons and things, so it may need a second stamp. Well, I hope that you feel inspired to try this for yourself. If you need to know about any of the supplies I used in today's video, you can find them in the description box on YouTube, along with a link to the blog post. If you follow me on Facebook, Karen Berniston Designer, you will be treated to daily inspiration. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.